Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Escape from New York, which is brought to you by Pendragon Game Studio. It's for one to four players, ages of 14 and up, and games generally run about 40 to 90 minutes. Escape from New York transports you into the iconic atmosphere of the movie, filmed in 1982 by the movie master John Carpenter. You will play the roles of the heroes, exploring the dangerous streets of New York, searching for the president, his case contained the government tape and a diagram of the bridges so you can escape from the city without stepping on a landmine. You can work together searching for these three things or you may decide to secretly satisfy your own personal objective at any moment during the game, escaping from New York alone and betraying your companions. Whatever your decision will be, you must face the bands of Manhattan, headed by the Duke of New York. Who will hinder you by moving prisoners and bosses to consume the short amount of time you have to complete your mission? So for this video and this prototype, I am using standees for your characters that you're playing with, the bosses you're going up against, and cubes for the general enemies that you'll be engaging with throughout the city. Now in the final version of the game, they're gonna have a fantastic, amazing miniatures. So give that a closer look for sure if you wanna know what those look like. I have a couple here to show you. But in general, you know, through the course of this video, you're just gonna see these standees and so forth. So keep that in mind. But the nice thing, what Pendragon really does for all these games that are based on these movie IPs and such, they really do make you feel like you're playing the movie. So just like the movie of the four main characters, these are the characters we'll be using and playing throughout the course of the game. And number one, we have Snake Bliskin, obviously. And then we have Brain and Maggie, and we have Cabby. All those characters are the ones you're gonna be using, and each of them have their own set of unique action cards to lead you and help you through the city and take out enemies and so forth. Now, each of the characters also have their own special ability you can choose to use as well. And they'll all be leveling up through the course of the game, which will allow you to add more cards in your hand, more action cards, giving you more special abilities and so forth. So again, those cards are unique, to each of the characters and it just depends on what style you like to play but you are trying to play together unless you aren't and you're trying to go for one of those personal objectives and betray your fellow players but i really like the co-op nature of trying to get out of the city where you have to find the president you have to find his tape and you have to find the plans for the bridges to get out of the city so you don't get blown to bits when you try to cross the bridge. So you have to have all those things in hand in order to cross the bridge and win the game. Each of the characters have their own starting unique gear as well. Cabby has his taxi. You have a diagram of the bridge from Brain and Maggie has her revolver. And of course, Snake has his SMG. And these weapons in general are going to have different amounts of ammo. You'll put tokens next to them to represent the amount of ammo you can use for that particular weapon. Also, just like the movie, there's a countdown timer. Snake in the movie has a timer on his wrist and that's represented by a deck of cards out of the main board. These cards are gonna be drawn when a player runs out of action cards or they can choose to do it early and draw one of those cards and get all their cards back from the discard pile. Now, the thing is, is that they're gonna do all kinds of different things, but more importantly, if you run out and get down to the red cards, one of those cards is gonna trigger a uh, end of game and you all will lose. So you have to be mindful of this timer throughout the course of the game for sure, as you're burning through your action cards but also it can trigger events or it might move the event track up. And as this event track moves up, you're gonna be drawing more of these terrible event cards. Also, nothing can happen at all. Or you might reveal one of these points of interest, one of the red cards out on the main board. Or you might trigger something with the helicopter. There's just lots of different things that can happen as the timer runs out. So managing that timer and how you use your action cards is key to winning the game. So these action cards are key to everything you're doing within the city. This is how you're moving around. This is how you're attacking enemies and so forth. And there's all kinds of combo cards here too, and even special cards that are very thematic to the characters. As you level up through the course of the game, you'll get to add more of these action cards into your deck. Now in your turn, it's very straightforward. You will choose two cards and play them face down, revealing one at a time and carrying out the actions that it calls for. Again, like I said, you're gonna be moving, exploring, and attacking. This is how you do it. And obviously, 
obviously you'll be cycling through this deck which also runs the timer down. So there are no dice rolls in this game, it's all related to how you use your action cards. Now the big thing to note is that as you play these cards you will be creating disturbances, you'll be creating noise throughout the city. There are exclamation points in here showing you how much noise you create and you'll move the tracker up on the board for the enemy, the duke and his cronies. You're going to be alerting them basically to your movements throughout the city. Now you also have a choice when you play these action cards. You can choose to play one and just discard the other if you want to use your character's special ability. And again, that will show how much noise you create and what all that does for you. And using that at crucial times. So it does come into play quite frequently that you'll have to sacrifice one of your action cards in order to invoke those special abilities. Now, as you deal with the enemies in this game, there are two different types. First you have the thugs or the prisoners. These are the basic enemies you're going to be dealing with a lot of. You can get overrun quickly so you have to be mindful and deal with them in an efficient manner. They all have one health so one hit takes them out unless there's a bonus card when put into play that they have extra health or they might be in a car. Yes, they can also take cars, abandoned cars that are around the city which will give them additional bonus and health as well. But in general you're just going to be eliminating them by doing one hit and that really helps, but they do overrun your position at times. You have to be mindful and work together. Now, there's also the boss level characters like the Duke and his cronies. Now, they have a health tracker, and as you do damage, it will mark down, and eventually you'll remove them from the board as you try to find the president and get out of the city. Now, if you want to win the game on your own and betray your fellow players, one of the key things you have to do is level up your character. You have to get all three levels. And through the course of that, there are going to be different requirements for the different slots. Like for Snake, he needs to kill two enemies in order to complete level one. And then you'll move that off the slot and you'll get a new action card. And as you move through the different levels, you'll get action cards and you'll be able to get different personal objectives if you so choose. But you need to have all three of these revealed in order to go after that solo objective. Again, if you want to betray your fellow players. Now before we take a look at the Duke and what all his cronies are going to do on their turn, at the end of every player they get to activate obviously, but around the city there are several icons to take note of. There's things like manhole covers that allow the enemy to move through uh, throughout the city. There's also like the helicopter, there's different tokens that you reveal to get items and there's just various things to take note of as you move around the board. Now you'll see also that there's city streets. So you have to be able to move through these tiles, through these city streets in order to move on to maybe a new empty spot. And as you move to an empty spot, you're going to be drawing a new card and placing that tile on the board. Now you have to be mindful of a lot of other things like there could be roadblocks and you can use cars to blow through roadblocks and you might have special actions that allow you to blow through roadblocks as well. If you don't, then you have to go around it in some way. And there'll be enemies that appear in slots, there'll be items that appear in slots, all kinds of different things. So be different types of items you can get. There's item cards and different gear you can acquire as you move and explore the city. But what's most important are these point of interest spots. Now these are the red ones again like I said before and this is how you'll find the Duke and how you'll find the different types of things you need to win the game and how you reveal the different levels of bosses and what they may have for you as well. Maybe they have things you need to win the game but those are the different main spots that you need to find to go after the main objectives for you all to win the game and escape the city. So as an example let's take a look at this point of interest. This is the plane crash. There'll be three enemies here just the basic ones, the thugs, and you'll see that you're going to reveal, or not reveal, but you'll put the token for case four here as well. Now, as you move onto the spot and as the enemies are completely dealt with, then you can collect that case. And in this case, you'll find the plans for bridge two. So that's one of the ways out of the city, one of the goals you need to achieve. And you really do have to find the Duke though, because you have to find the president to get out. Now, after each player takes their turn, then it's time for the New York phase. This is for the Duke and his cronies to take their turn, basically. Now, you have a set of New York action cards, and the first thing you're doing is discarding one to add one noise value to the level at the top of the board. Now, obviously, like I said before, as you played your action cards, that level moves up as well. So, if the cost on the next card 
matches or has that amount of noise available, then you'll move it back down and draw that card and do what it says. Now there's all kinds of different things that these action cards are gonna do. First, we have the big plan, and this one is kind of key because you'll have to move a number of mission tokens equal to the event level to the right box. And if you ever get to a point where you can't move those tokens over, then you're going to trigger one of the time cards. So that's another way the time tracker can move down. But you'll follow everything that these New York action cards have to say, and the key is noise. Noise is the key in how these cards get played and moved and so forth. Now also, if you happen to have enemies around you, not in your space, the card, the next card, will show how those enemies move into your space, from what areas. Now, if there's no enemy there, obviously they're not gonna move in. And you also may be placing roadblocks. So those cards, that next top of the card, will dictate a lot of that. And now, you're probably wondering, how do enemies affect you as the player? Well, they'll do damage, and the way damage works is it causes you to remove random cards from your action deck that you have in hand. So you'll have to basically discard those, losing out on possible actions, causing you to go after more timed cards because you need to get those actions back. So it does hurt you in the long run. Obviously, if you don't have any action cards left in your hand, they're not gonna do anything, but they do dwindle down your hand even quicker when they do damage, and that is how that time tracker works. So those are the basics of what you're doing. And as you can see, if you know the movie, you're playing a lot of what's happening within the movie to achieve your goals, to hopefully save the president, find the tape, and get out of the city. Or maybe you're just trying to betray your fellow players by using your personal objectives to win the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now. With that said, you know, along with this game and others they've done, they've done a fantastic job. I've said it before, but you really do feel like you're playing the movie. If you like these movies, this will probably be up your alley like it is for me. These are movies I've really enjoyed. Escape from New York, The Thing, they've done a good job with making you feel like you're sucked into that story, trying to fulfill the story elements and objectives that were set forth in those films. You feel like you truly are in that world. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it from me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.